Hello, this is Bill Strand. Welcome to your daily Chameleon Touchpoint. And today, we're gonna to talk about why does UVB have to be so darn complicated? Uh, it's science, isn't it? Unfortunately, the whole subject has been politicized and some would even argue weaponized. And so it's, uh, it's very difficult to get uh, good UVB information. Uh, but that's what we're gonna talk about today and uh, we'll see what we can do. Now, the first thing we want to do to understand this is understand how we measure UVB in the first place. Uh, we use the UV index scale, and that's a uh, sometimes called UVI, that's the abbreviation. And this is used by the World Health Organization to measure how long it's going to take for us to get sunburn. And so they, they give advisories as to you can only stand outside for 10 minutes before you're going to start getting a sunburn. And this is relevant to us chameleon keepers because the same wavelengths of UVB that give us sunburns also allow us to synthesize vitamin D3, which we need to be able to absorb calcium and live, essentially. So th this really is an important subject to learn about. The next thing we have to look into is how much UVB does a chameleon need? what intensity, what UV index should we be giving our chameleon at the basking branch uh, so they have access to it. And this takes a little bit of effort, uh, but we're lucky because that effort has been put in. Uh, you can go in my podcasts and I, I can link them below. Uh, we have discovered that a UV index three at a basking branch is sufficient for veiled chameleons and panther chameleons to create uh, fully calcified clutches of eggs without dietary D3. So we know that the amount of UVB that they're getting allows them to get enough calcium to do the one thing in the chameleon's life that takes the most calcium, and that's a female laying eggs. And so uh, those tests have been done. Now, it doesn't mean that UV index three is the only answer or the best answer. It just means that's the only value we have right now that has been proven effective. Now this would mean that there's no reason to go beyond UV index three, at least an observable reason. I did a test where I did a chameleons at a UV index three and then a UV index six, and I noticed no difference in growth rate or calcification of eggs. And so I concluded there's no observed benefit. Now that doesn't mean that there isn't. It just means I didn't observe it. If someone somewhere comes up with a way of saying, hey, yes, but if you looked at this and you gave them UVI six, it would be more effective. And I'd say, okay, let's try it out. And that's a wonderful thing about all these tests. They're repeatable. You don't have to believe me. You don't have to believe Pete Hawkins. You don't have to believe Jonathan Hill. You don't have to believe these people who have done it. You can do it yourself. And if anybody out there comes and says, no, we don't agree with that. We believe in this. All you have to do is ask, oh, okay, what was your test to come up with this? Uh, because if you can't repeat it and they haven't tested it, I, then it, it doesn't stand up. Then it's just a hypothesis and okay, we need those. But you can, if it's true, you can test it. I can test it. And, and actually that's the best thing is when the many people around the community test it. That is how we know that it's actually true. So right now, a UV index of three at the chameleon when they're basking has been proven effective. And so that's the working number that we're going with right now. And so now we've got to choose which of these tools we're going to be using. And since each one of these bulbs is going to be putting off a certain amount of UVB, what that means is that target level that we're looking for, the UV index three, uh, will be at different distances from the bulb. So for a uh, 6%, it will probably be around six inches under the bulb going through screen uh, when the bulb is used in the Arcadia Pro T5 fixture. Uh, for the 12%, you're starting to get beyond 12 inches till you get that, that UVI3. And so 
really which one you use depends upon how far away the bulb is going to be from your chameleon. Now, one thing that is critical when you talk about UVB light is you always have to specify the reflector and whether it's going through screen or not, because those two things have an enormous amount of impact on the UVB strength coming out. And the more effective the reflector to get all of the light down, the, the higher the UV index that you're going to be recording at a certain distance. Uh, and the screen, the top of the screen cage, that uh, filters out about 30 to 40% of the light. Uh, the screens that are normally used in things like the dragon strand cages or the, uh, the uh, reptibreeze cages, those are 70% transmission screen. And so you're filtering out at least 30% and which paint is used is, uh, will have some effect and, and other things have some effect, but those, those are good working numbers. Uh, and so it's important to know that if you use a different reflector or you use a different screen or the without the screen you're gonna be getting different numbers and this is why one reason why there's so much confusion is uh, somebody says I measured this at the 6% bulb and then somebody goes off and uses a different reflector in a different setup and a 6% bulb and they get different numbers and so you get all this big fighting when in reality they weren't doing the same test and so this is why I've had to focus on one bulb. I've chosen the Arcadia Pro T5 line because that is a bulb and very effective reflector all in one package. And so when I say the Arcadia Pro T5, everybody knows what I'm talking about, exactly what I'm talking about. And you're getting the, uh, the exact reflector and bulb that I'm talking about. Uh, then it doesn't mean that other bulbs are not effective. It just means it's harder to specify which reflector, which bulb, and make it easy for people to get those. In addition to the reflector and the screen, uh, another thing that changes the UVB output is the age of the bulb. And so uh, when I'm putting together these charts that say if you have a, a Pro T5 6% going through screen, this is the distance your the back of the chameleon should be from the bulb. That is my estimate about the best distance away from the bulb that will get you in a reasonable UV index, not too high, when the bulb is new, but still at an effective index, UV index when the bulb is old. So the absolute best way to uh, determine where to place the basking branch in distance away from your UVB bulb is to get a solar meter 6.5. That's the industry standard uh, UVB meter, which will give you a UV index reading and you'll, you'll be spot on uh, at whatever age your bulb is because the bulbs change how much UVB energy comes out depending on age. Uh, when they first turn on, very high levels and then they after about a hundred hours they ease off and and they plateau a little bit but they start going down and then after a year of life uh, they, they're really tapering off and so uh, the the solar meter is the absolute best way to know where your bulb is at any given time now solar meters tend to be 200 250 dollars and so uh, many people aren't able to get them uh, because of this, I've put together some charts that I put on the Chameleon Academy and make them available. And those charts are actually have been difficult to put together. It took me two years to gather all the information, compile it, and try to figure out the best numbers to give. Because if I'm telling somebody where to place this bulb, they're going to keep it that way for the entire year of the bulb. I can't tell them to uh, raise and lower it, uh, keep raising and lowering it over the entire life. And so uh, what I've had to do is pick the best distance that is within reasonable limits, even though they're very high, uh, when the bulb is new, but still within effective limits at the, uh, at the end of the bulb's life. And so uh, that, that was my estimate. And I estimated if you've got a Arcadia 6% Pro T5 going through screen and a basking branch uh, set up so the chameleon's back is six inches uh, below the bulb, 
you are going to have a uh, a reasonable range over that year of bulbs life it's not going to be so blistering high at the beginning and it's not going to be ineffective at the end and so you can use charts just know that it's the meter that would be the absolute best option so the best thing that anybody watching this can do is to get a basic understanding of UVB and a comfort in talking about it in terms of UV index. Talking about it in terms of 12%, 6%, 10.0, 5.0, that's not an effective way to talk about it because if you say veiled chameleons need a 12% bulb, uh, you could have somebody that's gonna put a 12% T5 bulb on a chameleon kit cage at 30 inches tall with a little baby chameleon that crawls on the top of the cage and is exposing its belly to UV levels that are beyond what's naturally found on Earth. Uh, and so that's not healthy. Um, so we need a more uh, sophisticated understanding and a more sophisticated way of communicating how to use UVB. And I'm hoping to do that through this channel, through the chameleonacademy.com. Um, it's, it's just hard, it really is. Uh, it's no easy soundbite that gives you an effective amount of information as to how to use UVB. So it really comes down to uh, the education of the community. So I'm glad you're here. So next steps in your understanding of UVB, I've got some links below that take you to some educational material that you can look at. And I'll probably start taking some of this educational material and go over it in this daily, uh, this, these daily episodes. I'll, I'll take a graphic and we'll just go through it piece by piece. We've got the time. So uh, let's, let's do that. UVB is complicated. There's no way around that. Uh, but I'm hoping that this discussion cut through a little bit of the confusion and the, the resources should help. Uh, if you have any questions, just let me know. Ask them in the comments below and I'll be there. We'll, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. It's important that the community understands it. So I'll, I'll hey, and I'm learning too. So I'll, we'll, we'll do it together. So we'll close this off. Thank you for being here. Uh, please like and subscribe and I'll see you tomorrow.